the grandson of our uh, pastor. He's going to come and sing a selection for us. Brother Herman Murray, Jr. Take my hand Lead me on Let me stand I am tired I am weak I am, I am warm Through, through the storms long Lead me on to the light. Take my hand, precious Lord, and lead. My way grows dreary, precious Lord, linger near. Oh, in my life, my life is all. Lest I fall, take my hand, precious, precious Lord, and lead, lead me on. Feet to Jesus, hold my hand. Take, take my hand, precious, precious Lord, and leave, leave me on. At the river, Lord, here I stand. God, God, my feet to Jesus, Lord. Oh, hold my hand. Take my hand, precious Lord, take my hand. Precious Lord, and lead, lead me on, yeah, lead me on. Certainly we enjoy that beautiful selection. Let's give him another hand. Beautiful. 
Uh, we all know Sister Murray loves that song. She usually helps him out, but we'll excuse her tonight. But she loves that song. And I know it's dear to them because after 35 years of dealing with all kind of spirits and, and attitudes, and there have been some dark days, some troubled times, had it not been for God holding their hands, they wouldn't have made it this far. Let's give our leaders a great big hand. Oh, they're worthy tonight. Tonight we would like to acknowledge State Representative Jesse Jones with us tonight. We're so happy to have him with us. And we're going to ask if he will come tonight with a few words. So happy to have him with us. State Representative Jesse Jones. To the presiding officer, to Apostle Abias Murray, and to Evangelist Shirley, Murray, we come tonight to representing the Texas House of Representatives to pay homage to one of our premier leaders in this state of ours. On occasions like this, we I ask that I would be seated in the audience because this is a kind of a family affair. I simply wanted to be here somewhat incognito, just that I might be able to say by my presence that the Texas House of Representatives does indeed take note of this great leader and the contribution that they are making as individuals, also in terms of the broad ministry. Many of our young men and young women, too many, are locked up in our prisons. But because of the great work that you are doing at the Full Gospel Holy Temple and your Learning Center, in your Christian Academy, in your camps, many more of our young men and young women are finding opportunities to do good. And that's what's right about what's going on here tonight in honoring these two outstanding individuals. We have asked that our Legislative Council draft the appropriate resolution to honor these two outstanding personalities. They have done so, and that has been communicated. And in difference of time, we would ask that it would be presented at the appropriate time. We also have, uh, by office, has received a letter from Governor George W. Bush, also acknowledging the outstanding contribution of the Murrays here in the, the city of Dallas and in the great state of Texas. We have come then. <clears throat> To personally say congratulations and best wishes, and may God continue to bless you, and may the wind always be at your back. At this time, we're going to have a selection from the combined choirs.
not here on 2nd Avenue, you were not here on 9th Street. Well, we have a special tribute tonight uh, to kind of give you an idea of some of the things uh, that happened during this ministry. Tonight we have Sister Benny Hearn, who's going to kind of give you an idea of what happened between 2nd Avenue and 9th Street. Then following her will be Elder Harold Rogers. Is going to give you an idea of some of the things that happened on Fordham Road and our present location. So at this time, we're going to present to you the sister. And I thank God for Sister Hearn because I've known her ever since she was 19 years old. <laughs> I thank God for her. Amen. She's coming tonight and following her, as I've said, uh, will be Elder Harold Rogers. So let's give Sister Hearn a big hand. As I'm happy to be here tonight. And I'm kind of surprised to be up, but uh, I can remember some of the things that happened on 2nd Avenue. I remember when the pastor first opened his church, we were there sweeping out the church, and how this man came along, come off of the streets, and he come into the church, and we was, the pastor was just in there sweeping and going on, and uh, he decided that he was going <coughs> to... He, well, he didn't come for our service, but while we were there, this man came in, the pastor prayed for him, and the Lord delivered him. He said he lived in cars and stuff like that. He didn't have no place to live, and uh, when, he got, when he left from there, I truly know that the Lord saved him, sanctified and filled him with the Holy Ghost, and gave him a, li a will to live. And I also remember that uh, on 2nd Avenue, we had a... Uh, so many people to pass by. Our little church was a little church right by the street. And uh, they would come by and they would laugh and stuff like that. And then, then different ministers would come by and they would sit and listen to the pastor because he had his um, loud speak on the outside. And uh, they would come by and sit and listen to him. And they said, this man really preaching the word of God. And I also remember how different people would come into the little church. They were coming there, and the pastor was preaching. He preached so hard, just like he preached now. He preached the same identical way. And they, many souls came in, and many uh, miracles was wrought. They would come in and get saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. And so many came until we, uh, we had demons to be delivered. I mean, they would come every night to be delivered. <laughs> so many demons. Seemed like that all, that's all what was coming. But I can truly tell you, everyone that came and wanted to be delivered, the Lord delivered them, saved them, and filled, filled them with the Holy Ghost. And I also remember that, uh, you know, the, so many people just started coming. It seemed like the ministry, it picked up, and so many people, it was just six of us we started with. But before we left 2nd Avenue, they were sitting up to the pulpit. It was, it was full. That little church was packed out. The pastor packed that little church out so till he had to leave from there. The Lord filled with the Holy Ghost and filled his church up, filled that church up. And I also remember uh, how he filled that one up. And then we went on to 9th Street and how that the Lord went to 9th Street and how he filled that church up. He delivered many souls and filled them with the Holy Ghost. And we were sitting up to the pulpit there. And I also remember when we was on Fulton Road, uh, the same thing happened. The Lord saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost, and they were sitting up to the pulpit there, all the way around the pulpit, everywhere. So, uh, you know, the Lord truly did come in and bless them to wh where we are today. Pray for me.
good when demons come to get delivered, isn't it? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> this evening I give honor to God and to my pastor, Apostle Murray, to Evangelist Murray, to keynote speaker, Apostle Wallace, to all the bishops and their wives, and to the, the head table entire. I'm just glad to be here this evening. I'm glad to say that I, I'm a part of Full Gospel Holy Temple and have no intentions of going anywhere else. Listen, there ain't been any talk. I was, so many things were going through my mind and I'm trying to get all this in line. But in 1961, the church moved to Fordham Road and often we've heard houses described as having wall-to-wall -wall carpet and chandeliers and so forth, but the church on Fordham Road could be characterized as a building having wall-to-wall -wall people, air conditioning running all year round in order to keep the house cool because when we had church, we had church. And so often people refer back when they talk about the church to Fordham Road because Fordham Road was, Fordham Road was, I, I say it was like the time when full gospel grew out of the age of being a child, grew out of being adolescent. It let the world know that we're here and we're here to stay. And a statement was made to the city of Dallas because at that time the uh, church was growing so that there was not enough room in the uh, main auditorium for the saints of God to have service. So they, they had children's church. But then the children's church filled and after that the apostle bought a small building and used it and they named it the Happy House. And that's where the little kids were able to go and they had their church. So on Fordham Road you had three sites going. You had the Happy House, you had Children's Church, and then you had the main auditorium. And I'm sure many of you remember on Fordham Road how the apostle preached. He's, he's mellowed out some now. He keeps his coat on a little a little more often, but on Fordham Road, most of the time, an apostle got up to preach and he graced the pulpit and, and his eyes turned red and he started sweating. He'd get out of his coat and you could see the suspenders on him and, and it looked like he, every demon in town looked like it was trembling at the sound of his voice. And many people got delivered on Fordham Road and the occasion when demons were being cast out, he would tell them, grab a Bible. And people would, people would take him at his word. They were so afraid, they would, if they didn't have a Bible, they were reaching next to their neighbor and grabbing a hold of their Bible. Because they knew some devils was coming out tonight. And that was the type of man that he was. You know, and the Lord began to move. So, you know, it's a miracle how God is, how God knows what he's going to do and when he's going to do it. And he has a way of preparing and laying a table for those things to come, and, come into fruition. And, you know, the Lord began to move on Bishop College campus. And he shook that college, shook it so that souls began to cry out, what must I do to be saved? And during that revival, many young men and women got saved, Dr. Evil Pearl Lewis being one of them, Superintendent Evans, Sister Evans, and on down the line, Sister Jackie Wallace, and so many more came, Brother Raymond Robertson, as they gave their life to Christ. And as the Lord began to shake Bishop College, and, and people were wondering, you know, what's going on? It looked like the enemy tried to stop it, but it looked like the more the devil tried to stop the move of God, the more it grew. An apostle being the type of man that he was and being so faithful and steadfast in his belief, Bishop Keel, an apostle, took their leave and went to the, to the country of India. And often we've heard the apostle speak of how when he were in India he slept on the ground and how they went places and he were able to walk on foot faster than they could travel in cars because of the road condition but a man that was sold out and dedicated to the cause of Christ didn't mind doing that and sometime I, I would we would be sitting and talking you would hear him describe the things that happened there the apostles say sometime he would be laying there trying to go to sleep and he would look up in the corners of the room and I know how some of you women are concerning rats and lizards and things like this and having just them can you imagine just the idea you're gonna lay down and shut your eyes and go to sleep and perched up in the corner of the wall there were lizards just there eyeballing you and checking you out and you had to shut your eyes and go to sleep he said sometimes you could hear them boop when they would hit the floor and all that and you, you still had to lay there I'm glad my wife wasn't there. They had cleared the house if something had a <laughs> fell off the wall. But you know, it takes something to be sold out, willing to sleep on straw for the cause of Christ. And our thought tonight is great is our faithfulness. And then as the Lord began to move and the church began to grow even more so, the Lord elevated Bishop Murray from the position of being a bishop to the seat of the apostle. And at that point, God spearheaded this movement in another direction. 
Full Gospel Holy Temple was no longer encompassing the city of Dallas. Full Gospel Holy Temple was spreading out. The first church was established in Greenville, Texas, and later, not too long after that, the church was also uh, a church was established in Marshall, Texas, where Bishop Larry B. Keel is the pastor now. And as the Lord began to bless and the church began to grow, it moved then from Fordham Road to 1975, 1900 South Ewing. And the apostle often tells us the stories of how he looked at the church and how that it wasn't a thing of getting just notoriety or whatever, but it was a need. He needed a bigger place to have service. And I, I, I often remember when I first came to Full Gospel on Fordham Road, I never saw anything like that. I never saw people sitting everywhere. I never saw people sitting all in the pulpit and, and he had maybe just one little area where he could stand and preach and there were people all down in front of the mourner's bench everywhere. And I, 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 I remember when I first came to talk to the apostle and, and he, he told me, you know, I, I felt somewhat, I don't know how I felt, really being a little young preacher and he being an apostle and everything. And he, we went to the office and talked and he went out to the pulpit and I figured I'd sit somewhere on the side and gave me a seat right there beside him. Great is our faithfulness. And then as the service started, he told me, so you want to go down and pray with him? And I was, you know, raised up in another church. I got filled with the Holy Ghost in another church. And sometimes we would, we would save you, Lord, and thank you, Jesus, and so forth like that until you came through with the Holy Ghost. And I, I, I you know, I had my mind saved. I said, this young man want to get saved. So I went down there with the brother. We were going to pray him through to the Holy Ghost. And I was down there telling the brother, save me, Lord, save me, Lord. You know, I'm trying to help him get through. And this other brother was over there telling him, speak it out, brother, that's it, that's it. I'm, I'm trying to still tell him, save me, Lord, you know, save me. And, and finally, I, I'm still over there telling him, save me. The brother touched me on the shoulder. He says, okay, brother, you can, you can stop now. He got it. <laughs> Feel him with the Holy Ghost, just like that. So, Praise the Lord. <laughs> I learned a lot that night. Amen. And the Lord began to bless the church. We had many radio broadcasts and uh, heard of a KSKY. Even before I moved to Dallas, I was able to hear the broadcasts weekly over K, uh, station KSKY and as, as I said we moved to 1900 South in 1975 the Lord blessed the apostle not only you know preacher was talking about they wanted that building that we're in now and they were talking some made statements how they had walked around the building but the apostle had walked through the building and I, I, I it's amazing how you look at it, how the Lord blessed us not only to buy the church but to buy two city blocks and to buy all the houses that were on that block and you know as the church began to grow some of the saints were living in some of the houses but as the church began to grow he had to have more room for parking space and the bulldozers came through and wiped some of the houses out and sometime you look across that front lot and you can remember it was a house here and there was a house there and there was houses going up Louisiana but now it's all parking space because the Lord had moved so on Ewing and you know as you hear and know the amount of the what the church cost and I believe it was 15 years it was given that the uh, mortgage would be paid off Burnt the mortgage one Sunday morning in front of the pulpit. Two and a half years, the Lord blessed to pay the church off. Let's give full gospel a big hand and clap. And the saints loved the apostle as he would travel and go to different cities running revivals. Never forget, I heard him say on one occasion he got ready to go on a trip one time and he had one easy ride a bus. And there were left more people on the ground than it was able to get on the bus. And he told his saints, if y'all help me buy another one, we'll get another one. But let me tell you a little bit something about when he bought his first bus. When he bought his first bus, they went down and looked at it and picked out one that they wanted. And the man kept telling him, asking him concerning where was he going to get his financing. And the apostle didn't make no big to do about the matter. And the man just kept telling him, well, you know, you're going to have to have a cashier's check. He still didn't make a big to do about it. And when he picked out the one that he wanted, and when the man got his money and he found out what the apostle could do, when he got ready to go and get the second bus, he didn't ask for a cashier's check. He didn't ask for anything. He just send me one of your own. That'll be good enough. You know, Full Gospel Holy Temple has a reputation now that exceeds, words can't explain it. This man has established himself as being an apostle indeed. And the Lord bless us with our second bus. And the saints were able to travel, you know, and it's, it's something you don't have to pay any bus fare. You just get on board, ride, and have a good time. And the Lord began to bless the ministry even more so, being at 1900 South Ewan. The, the apostle said on the other night, 
that long before the school was established, he had already chosen and set up a school board. And his kids being at an age where they wouldn't even benefit from the school, but he had something in mind. He wanted to see your kids and my kids ed educated in a Christian environment where they didn't have to go to school and be subject to some of the things that some of the kids are in the public school system. And he found a piece of property. I, I, I remember once we were trying to figure out what was happening. We were trying to pick it to see where, when, you know, one thing about the preacher, when he don't want to tell you anything, you just don't know nothing until he get ready to tell you. And when we found out where it was, and we went over and saw the uh, First Baptist Church of Oak Cliff, which now is the Lobeus Mary Christian Academy and the Shirley Mary Daycare Center, 11 acres of choice property right off Interstate 35. If you haven't been by to see it, you owe it to yourself to go by and see it. A fully accredited school, K through 12, I believe it's the only fully black operated accredited school in the state of Texas. And you know, this school has been there, uh, it has made itself known to the city of Dallas. Our school has even been represented on Good Morning America. You know, and I think this is something to be commended. Can we give the school a big hand and clap this evening? And you know, the, the apostle was not only satisfied with the kids going from the first through the 12th grade, but there's a Shirley Murray, Shirley Murray Learning Center that's there that we can take the little ones. And I've got a little nephew that goes there now. And he went to another school and some of the, they told him that he was somewhat hyper. He had uh, some kind of problem because he was so active and he was always full, he was full of energy. And since he's been there at that school, let me tell you, he can quote scriptures in the Bible. He can tell you this. He can tell you that. He can tell you this. And it's, it's amazing how this young man's mind has been cultivated, has been changed just by going to the Shirley Murray Learning Center. And the Lord also blessed our church with the LNS Christian Camp down in Marshall, Texas, 109 acres. And I remember when the apostle first went down and looked at it. And it rained that day, and we were standing on the little makeshift tent. And all I could see was woods, 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 and more woods. And he was saying, we're going to do this, and we're going to do that, and we're going to do this. And all I could see was woods, 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 and more woods. And you know, the Lord's blessed that. If you haven't been down to see our camp, you ought to yourself to go and see. It's really something to see. Come on, give him a big hat and clap. A beautiful lake, dormitories, cafeteria, a place where the saints of God can go. The kids can go in the summertime and enjoy themselves, a place where we can meet 4th of July and fellowship. Amen. It's a wonderful place to see. And last but not least, the Lord has blessed our church. We've moved up from the radio broadcast. We've moved into the field of television. The Lord has blessed the church to move up into a realm that I'm all excited about it. I'm excited about it because every Sunday we hear, we see all the prayer request that comes in after our broadcast is over. And you know, I, we used to ask sometimes, wonder why the apostle won't get on TV. But one thing about him, he know when he wants to do what he wants to do. And the Lord is blessing our television broadcast by leaps and bounds. Got a lot of dedicated young men. I think we have a dedicated church.